hey guys following our previous activity of adding our data model to our project we will now proceed to start running queries to collect data from our database and somehow present it in our application so our first activity is to deal with well existing data so we know we have data in our table we put it there in the types of cars table where we have four cars to be selected from and the objective here is to modify our list for the drop down box and bind it directly to what is coming from the database. So I went into the design, I went to edit items, and right now there is nothing inside of type of car that is empty. Let's just verify how empty it is. So I'm looking at the application itself and you see there is nothing in there. So the expectation is that after our operation, we'll see the car is in there, all right? So let me just close that, go over to the code behind, and then we can get started. So the first thing that I want to do is create an object that represents our data model. So remember I said that there's a few names here that we need to know, so I right click, go to properties, and then the, we need to know the name of our entity container, which is car rental entities, right? So in the code behind, um, under the public partial and right above the control, the constructor, sorry, I'm going to enter private and say read only. So I'm declaring an object of type car rental entities. So this object embodies this entire space, this entire space that you're looking at, the entire diagram, every entity represented in the diagram is encapsulated by the type car rental entities. So by making reference to car rental entities, giving it an object name, so I'm going to call it car rental entities with a common C, and I'm going to just do semicolon. And then, so this object is going to give me access to every single entity that is inside of my model or every table that I would have inserted into the model, all right? So, back in the code behind. The next thing I want to do is actually initialize it. So this is a declaration, but it's not initialized. Right now, this is null, right? So I'm just going to say car rental entities is equal to a new instance of and car rental entities. Please note, var wouldn't work here. You can't declare parts of a class as var, all right? So you can do variables as var, but you can't do properties of a class as var. So this is a private property of our form. All right. So once again, we've declared a private property of type car rental entities, car rental entities being the name of our entire database model. All right. And then I give it the object name with the same name, just with a common C and here in the constructor, I'm just initializing it to a new instance. So it's no longer null. It's grayed out because no, it's not being used, but don't worry about that just yet. All right. Now, the next thing I need to do is to figure out how is it I'm going to retrieve the data from the database so that it is present by the time the form comes up. So the expectation is that when I open this application, the form loads, and it will load with a drop down list fully equipped with the data it needs to carry the operation. So that means I need to query the database, get the information from the database, have it presented in the form, all of that by the time you, the user, would be ready to click the drop down box. So I'm going to add what we call a form load event. So I'm just clicking the form. Notice I click form and the box itself or the canvas itself is selected. And then I go to properties, click the lightning bolt, and I'm going to look for the load event, see? So I'm, I want something to happen when the form is loaded. So when the form loads, I want to run that query very quickly, all right? So I'm going to generate a form load event. I'm just going to double click in that and it's saying form one underscore load. So then it's saying, what do you want to happen when the form loads? So when the form loads, once again, I want to query the database. So I'm going to say something like var 
cars is equal to, so I'm declaring some variable called var. I'm calling it cars, or sorry, some variable of type var, calling it cars, and then I need to assign something to it. And what I intend to assign to it is records from the database, from the table types of cars. So when I declared this entity up top here, or this object rather of type car rental entities, this represents my database. So I can then say car rental entities, and then use my dot because it's an object. So I can use my dot operator to see the properties therein. And then when I say dot, you'll notice that I have my table being made references. So car rental records. If I go back to my database and look, car rental record was the name of the table, but then the, it has many records. So that's one of the things the, mo the model does by default. It tries to pluralize the table names because, I mean, I call it a table name, car rental record, but it's really a car rental records system. So I really should have called it car rental records, but that's uh, beside the point. The fact is that using my dot operator, I can access this table. So that's not the table I want, though I want type types of cars. All right, and then I want this in the form of a list. So I'm going to say dot to list. Open and close parentheses. And so what this is doing is using a language or a mechanism we call link. So it's native C sharp, but the library itself is called link. And it is a nice way to query your database using native C sharp code. So once again, I would have basically established an instance of a connection to my database through the declaration of this property. I initialized it in the constructor. So that's what constructors are for. They initialize things or initialize, see initialize component there. Well, I'm initializing my database to a new instance. And then when I want to call on the database, I use that object that was previously declared and initialized. I use my dot operator and then I can access my table and then basically that's it. So if you're used to, literally that's it. And I'm just converting it to a list. So I want it in a specific data type called a C-sharp list. And that is why I have the to list. So if you're used to database development, this is the same thing as saying select star from types of cars but then this is sql this is not native c sharp so to be able to write this kind of sql would have taken far more lines and you know i would have to initialize a data reader then a data table to collect the objects and a bunch of things but link makes it so easy because you just call the database model call the table and then if you want it in a list, you just say to list. And it's easier to just say to list because that's a more universal data type and it's easier to maneuver with. So now that we have the list of cars stored inside of our variable cars, we need to put it to use. So what I want to do once again is when the form loads, which is going to fire this event, we want to get the list of cars from the database and then have the combo box display them. All right. So the next step is to say, call our combo box so that CB type of car, right? And then we're going to say display member. So there are two properties that we're going to set first. We want to set the display member and that is going to be equal to name. So display member is a text that you see. All right, so remember that when we had it set up, the way you set in the items and you would see the text Honda, we would see the text Toyota, etc. Display member is the text that you see. And so if you look back at your database design, you would notice that the ID is one, two, three, four. You don't want the person to be seeing one, two, three, four. That means nothing to them. But the text that you want them to see is the name. Honda, Lada, Buggy, Toyota, right? So name is the display member. And the value that we're interested in would be the ID. So we have value member. 
So you have display member and you have value member because it's actually the value that we want to store, not the display. Once again, we have a car rental record that has a type of car ID of type int, which means we only want to store the ID associated to the type of car. We don't need to know the name again because that's why we created the table to just store the names and the IDs. So once we make reference to that ID, from the car rental record, we can look back and see that, oh, if it was ID3, then we know it's buggy. Or if the person selects buggy, we want to store ID3 on the record. All right. So the, the value member would be what you intend to really store. And that's in the background, right? And then after setting those two, I am going to say that the data source for the items to be put into the combo box so that CB type of car dot data source is going to be equal to cars. So let's go through this again. I'm querying the database for the list of cars. And then I'm saying that I want my combo box, whatever data source it gets, whatever bit of data it gets, just look for a display member for name, set the value member to be ID, and then set the data source to be the cars. So when I get the list of cars, they're all coming over with ID and name. So I'm going to display the name, I'm going to store the ID, and I'm going to set that this list of cars with ID and name should be the source for the list of items coming into this combo box. So let's start and see how that works. And voila, so, now you're seeing a list of items for our form or for our drop down. So remember, I cleaned them out earlier. So it loaded, there was nothing in there. Now you're seeing that data is actually in there. And this data is coming directly from the database. And to prove that, I'm going to close that window, go over to the database, add one more car. So we added one more car to our fleet. And this one is a Subaru. All right, so now we have five cars in our fleet and I'm going to go back, execute again. And when we look in the list, the expectation is that we're going to see the Subaru that was just added. So that is your first step towards connecting to your database. So let's just review what we did. We set up a form load event because we realize that there's certain data coming from the database that needs to be present in our form by the time the form loads. So after initializing a connection to the database through the use of my object or reference to the entities model, so we have our entity model, I initialize an object of the type of that entity model all right, so I declared it up here, initialized it here, and then I realized that I needed data from that database before the form loaded. So I set up a form load event, which queried the table, and basically just did the initial steps towards setting up the combo box. So these steps are pretty much universal. This is not this is not unique to the fact that I'm using the entity model and this and that. This is how you set up a combo box to inherit from a list of items, whether it's a static list or a list coming from the database, whether you're using link or you're using the other methods that are there. The fact is that this is how you data bind or you bind the objects to your controller or to your combo box rather. All right. So once again, we ran our query, got a list of cars from our database. Literally, if you read from right to list, that's left, that's all it's saying. Give me a list of the types of cars from the database and store it in this variable. And then later on, we say that we want to display the name and store the ID. And then the data source should be from the list of the cards that we just retrieved from the database. And so when our form loads, we see that it is running that query and getting all that data. If you want to put a breakpoint here and restart the application and just go step by step to see exactly what happens just to be sure, then you can feel free to do so. But that is our first step to connecting to the database. In the next video, we will be looking at how when we click submit, 
Right now, all we do when we click submit is, you know, display the information. Next time we want to actually save it in our car rental record table. So that's what we'll be doing in the next video.